I'm very glad to be here and uh, share our experience of the, the practice of pediatric neurosurgery in a, in a French-speaking, in a uh, sub-Saharan African, in developing country that is mine, um, Senegal. And I would like to, to thank all the people who have made this possible. Senegal is a, a small country that is located in the most western part of West Africa with a healthcare budget of 280 million US dollars. Um, Jan told me the, the healthcare budget of the, the group uh, of all five hospitals is 1.66 billion for five hospitals, just in comparison. As you see, here you have Senegal, and uh, inside Senegal, for those who know, there is a former British colony, the Gambia. This is an administrative map, and uh, as you see, the capital, Dakar, is considered as the nose of Africa. We have here some healthcare indicators, especially infant and maternal mortality rates, and you can see how high they are. <coughs> I'm going to talk about Senegal, but all the countries in the, that area, sub-Saharan African countries, uh, share the, the same consideration. They have the same problems. Uh, made of inadequate infrastructures, not enough. And uh, once you leave the, the capitals or the big city, you have maximum one big hospital in a whole region, especially for the specialized care. <coughs> so it is for equipment, particularly in equipment. Diagnosis tools are very poorly performing and they are either um, not, uh, lacking or not very up to date. This is uh, an illustration of uh, our uh, pediatric unit in our department. It's in reality a big room with eight beds inside, eight beds. So you see this is an adult bed with inside a small baby who shares the bed with his, with his mother during the night, or her, his grandmother. You see how this baby is a little one. This is our intensive care unit. You know, it's the same, adult pets and very little children. It is, it is always the same uh, in um, human resources. Usually, equally not enough in quantity and in quality. And uh, there are countries where there is no neurosurgeons. These are the, the number of neurosurgeons correlating to the countries. As you see, Senegal, Côte d'Ivoire, and Cameroon have the lead with about the same number, 13, in a whole country. After you have uh, Mauritania, Mali, Benin, <coughs> DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, has only five neurosurgeons and 75 million habitants. The bottom line is Cap Vert, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, and uh, Republic Centrafricaine, where there is no neurosurgeon. There is no native neurosurgeon. Sometimes there is there are Cubans, neurosurgeons, who work there. In the, the, the studies we, we do in our, in our field, we usually uh, don't correlate them to reliable statistical uh, uh, <laughs> national statistics. We have only um, hospital series, but there is something that is definitely permanent. It's the, light, the late medical consultation. 
In our experience, we deal with cosmopolitan neurosurgical pathologies, but <coughs> especially uh, some are the most frequent <coughs> is malformations in general, hydrocephalus in particular, but infection. Infection is our main problem. And traumatism and tumors. In none of those countries, we practice functional surgery. It's considered to be beyond our possibility, actually. Uh, we've, we've, we've been studying hydrocephalus a lot in a period of time, and um, um, the average age of management is five months. We got CT scan in our country in um, 1993 and MRI in 2007. These pictures show um, the best, how long pa patient parents take um, to, to bring us the, these babies. They come at a very um, late stage of their illness. These pictures are quite normal for us. This boy on your left was 17 years old. 17. He came to see a doctor for the first time. Fortunately for him, his hydrocephalus was stabilized. Malformations in general are the first etiology uh, dominated by aqueductal stenosis, but over aqueductal stenosis we sometimes see others like this Dandy Walker malformation with this uh, characteristic aspect of the school uh, and uh, this bulging occipital bone correlated to the cyst of the posterior cerebral fossa. Infection is, is, uh, uh, is our quotidian problem. You know, Senegal uh, lays in a, in a band, a large band of um, uh, where the, the meningitis is endemic. It is called La Pessoni meningitis belt. Our principal problem was for a long time, who had been for a long time, the, the availability and the cost of shunts. We didn't have shunt. We commanded them in France. It took at least three weeks. So no emergency. And we just used to insert all shunts we had. And we, we tested many of them. Today, this problem is behind us, thanks to Shabra, Indian shunts. They are available and they are cheap. And in addition, we, we practice uh, third ventriculostomy in Dakar since 2010. We encountered, out, we, and we, we dealt with, with all complications, you know, there are many of shunts. This is a mechanical uh, disconnection of the material and uh, a CSF collection, retroauricular. This is a misplaced uh, ventricular catheter uh, who crossed the midline uh, very far drained the, the opposite lateral ventricle, and it worked. Um, this is hyperdrainage. Um, you see how depressed is the fontanella. This is the dramatic complication uh, of a baby who went to a pra pra traditional practitioner. We never uh, knew what he did. Obviously, it was... Uh, Hyper drainage, but we, we didn't know how it this 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 young baby died. This is the extrusion of the ventricular catheter through the anus and here through the abdominal wall. This is a pseudocyst, peritoneal pseudocyst. You, you see the extremity of the ventricular the peritoneal catheter, and this is a sti the the excision of the cyst by our colleagues. Um, general surgeon. 
Here is local infection. This is a drop of pus, as you see. There are no structures for <coughs> the follow-up of these babies when they have uh, some handicap. They are for we assume the, the follow-up of these uh, children as they were operated by us. Not by the pediatrician, no psychologue, no nothing. Neurosurgeons do everything. We had several cells. Um, the main lo localization was occipital one. The etiologies for these um, malformations are multifactorial and um, they, they are dominated by nutritional deficiencies. These are small malformations, cephalo cells, occipital. Of this, this picture is quite interesting when you consider the, the details. This is the, the cephalo cell, but look at this. This is our head holder that has been made from drip. You make a, like a bird nest with a depression in, and you put the face inside and it works. These are the, the electrodes for monitoring. You know, normally they are single used, but we, we, we use them several times and at the, at the end they are not very adhesive. So we put the, the scotch uh, uh, tapes on it to fix it and it works. <laughs> this is another example of cephalocell, occipital. Here you have already large lateral ventricle. This is another baby I received who came from Liberia during the war. His, his 13 years old mother <coughs> had been raped. Uh, and he came with the, his young mother and, and the grandmother. Big malformation or small lesion. It'd been operated and, and drained finally because the, it occurred <coughs> in hydrocephalus. This is an interhemispheric interparietal uh, malformation, sensipital cephalo cells. These are still cephalo cells with some uh, ulceration of the skin. Other examples, uh, interparietal. These are frontal, frontonasal or frontoidmodial. Uh, other complication, these are small malformation. This is without uh, uh, covered skin. These are to be operated very in emergency. We have um, a very interventionist attitude for these kinds of uh, uh, malformations because of cultural and uh, uh, societal consideration. We still have uh, spina bifida, mm. despite uh, government policies uh, of uh, supplementation, polyvitaminic supplementation, and, and fight against malnutrition. But we still have it. These are the, yeah, I think you know these kinds of, of images. Our treatment is <coughs> surgery, but not so, uh, uh, so often as cephalocells. Here, when uh, neurological disorders are, are too severe, when the hydrocephalus is too monstrous, when there is a rupture of the malformation, we don't operate them. We just do uh, local care, cure, before operating them when they feel better. This is pus infection always. The mortality is high. And we agree with everybody that the only favorite uh, means of, of uh, fight against, against these malformations are prevention. <coughs> Caudal appendix is a very rare malformation. We had some, but we do operate them very quickly. There is a very um, strong demand of parents for, for surgery because, as you know, uh, Caudal appendix is considered as human tails. And tails uh, lead to monkey. 
And uh, once someone sees the baby with something like a, a tail, there is stigmatization for generation after. Because they, they are somehow correlated with uh, uh, sex with monkeys or, or devil or something like that. So we operate them in emergency. These are, you know, this is not a tail, but it's considered as is this small malformation. Usually easy to, to remove. Infection is a pathology of children and adolescent, you cannot imagine how assessing a diagnosis of brain abscess is hard without CT scan or MRI. It is very um, uh, complicated sometimes. And we had a study <coughs> we found 20% of uh, uh, autopsy findings in Dakar. But now it's easier, of course. Uh, the, the culture of pus is usually uh, sterile, but we have all germs. We, we find all germs, especially Staphylococcus, and uh, more and more uh, uh, negative uh, gram bacillus. These are some aspects. We have many brain abscess. This is automastoidite and, uh, and cerebral, cerebral uh, um, abscess. These are others. This is a quite nice. Uh, Ventriculite supurée uh, in a baby. This is un PMA with this collection of pus, sus palpebral. We drain them, of course. We, we just do a tap with a burr hole uh, for, for abscess. And for un PMA, we do not uh, uh, perform craniotomy, but we do a trefil. The mortality is is still very high. In traumatology, we, our attitude is usually conservative concerning uh, spinal traumatism. In, uh, in children, the brain injuries um, are the fact of, of uh, domestic, domestic uh, accident. Most of the time, with falls, sometimes babies, uh, escape uh, the, their mother surveillance, go upstairs and it fall. First, second, even third floor. If they have luck, they fall on sand and they don't die. If not, unfortunately, they die. Fall from, from trees is also interesting. Trees is considered as something very good. It's good for environment and so on. But there is a, the second a aspect we know is the boys in the rural areas go and climb, especially the boys. They climb to, to look for fruits or just telling their other uh, friends that they are afraid of climbing as high as possible. You know, boys are a little bit, you know. <laughs> and sometimes they're full. And this is another aspect of, of trees. In the whole um, uh, population, in adults, uh, traffic, traffic accident is, of course, the, the main reason of, of uh, consultation and, uh, and, and death. In our country, alcoholism is not a problem. We have um, population at 95% of, of Muslims, and usually they don't drink. And it's not a, a health care problem. But our problem is undiscipline. In a study that had been done, we found um, human um, responsibility in 65%. Human responsibility and mechanical responsibility only in 35. Look at this. This is a, a car uh, with it transportation of things, material, people, and so on. Look at this young lady. She has in his arm a baby. 
Of course, there is no uh, seat belt. But look at their smile. They even don't imagine that uh, just a donkey crossing the road uh, suddenly may be uh, very problematic. Look at these. these they are very happy to be here. <laughs> and here, you and I, we are convinced that this guy doesn't see where he goes. <laughs> he he's, he's trying. Uh, voilà. for, for children, maybe you know the, the criteria of master that consider different groups when you receive trauma, uh, traumatism. Uh, they are the benign, they go back home. In children, we usually keep them as we can. If we have place, we, we, we keep them. Because when, when they go back home, sometimes when they, they, there is an aggravation in the middle of the night, they have no means of transportation to, to come back. So well, we, we keep them. It's easier. This is a ping pong. We call it ping pong. Ping pong uh, uh, fracture. Um, hematoma, um, extradural hematoma, super cute. This is the newborn. Hello, we removed the, the hematoma and, and as the bone flap was, was broken, we reconstructed it with, with just sutures, you know, and voila, it was quite good. Growing fractures sometimes too. You have um, we remove the the cyst and um, make a, a watertight closure of the dura. This is the bulging cyst and the defect, the bone defect. Here you have it at the area of the fontanella. This is a cyst. Yes, we removed it and tight uh, closure to the the dura tight. Now in the past. Uh, we had the notion that um, child abuse didn't exist in Africa. Because in Africa, uh, when your child does not well, you have a cravash and then you will beat him. <laughs> it's, it's quite frequent. So there is no need to, sh to shake him for not uh, uh, giving stigmas of, of, of traumatism. You beat him. <laughs> and when there is, there are some uh, trace, the trace, the, the trace, the, the coup. The trace, the coup. Marks, marks, yes. When there are marks, when he goes to, um, um, when he go, goes back at home, He'll, uh, when the parent says, what is this? He says, uh, the teacher has beaten me. It's good for you. And he beats you again. <laughs> but you probably have done something wrong. It's, 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 it's that. <coughs> so there's, we don't shake babies. No, we, we, were, we were convinced that there was no uh, child abuse. No beaten. But today we are definitely convinced it's wrong. The they childs are abused everywhere. We have just to educate the, the doctors who, who receive the, the, the patients and make them be aware of the circumstances <coughs> in which the traumatism occurred. And when, when you look at this, you, you sometimes find well, this is just to, to, to show that uh, obstetric neurotraumatism is equally a problem. But uh, from a, an unfinished study uh, carried out by one of our colleagues, anatomopathologist, and he did a series of 500 systematic autopsy in, new, in death newborn. He found 100 and 55 cases of hemorrhage. But the, the study was, the methodology was so bad, it, we couldn't ha uh, tell anything about this. And it was a pity because 
he did a lot of lot of autopsies and it could be it could have been a very interesting uh, study well alors this domain illustrates the best all the problem we, we encounter the surgery itself is very is uh, exp expensive um, people are poor the technical platform is not always up to date and especially drugs and radiotherapy drug for chemotherapy and radiotherapy are uh, most of the time unavailable so the mortality is high we studied years ago about 500 tumors but only the half less than the half were operated and those who were operated uh, among them the half had uh, the histological results because of different problems um, we studied uh, in pediatric cases and compare, compare it to to the other countries but there are always very small series of 12 or uh, 15 16 series they are not uh, specifically uh, studied but the the problems are uh, the same medulloblastoma especially to illustrate it um, malignant tumor come at the late stage very big tumors uh, active hydrocephalus we operate them but there is no uh, after chemotherapy or radiotherapy this is a big problem the epidermoid cyst is a benign <coughs> tumor very easy to remove that had been described by uh, an old neurosurgeon from Nigeria Adeloya Adelole easy to remove a lot <coughs> we see this uh, less and less this is a sciatic nerve injury after <coughs> intramuscular injection this is due to an incompetence of nurses they they just inject the the kinin kinina the product just in the middle of the botox exactly where the the sciatic nerve passes so they they induce paralysis and pain our perspective are of course renovation of our department we plan to have a, a specific uh, pediatric unit not only a big room with eight beds inside and uh, increase the number of surgeons we are 13 in the country there are three centers in ours we are eight the eight are in our uh, service but there is no neurosurgeon in any other region out of the capital so we want to have a neurosurgeon in each region so we need for that we need to promote uh, training of course but especially equipping this is our problem equipping because they think the development of neurosurgery in africa must not be postponed so we have problems but we we face we don't give up we don't give up we are not uh, many but we we face and in that fight we are not alone we are we have support of uh, some wonderful people as nick would say some wonderful people who are who come to us look what we are doing and ask for problems think with us and try to help us solving the problems uh, they are very committed very committed uh, they are generous and especially very efficient efficient when i have problems in my in my service sometimes when i say we have this problem how can we solve it the nurses used to say ask iflk <laughs> so so i want to, to thank them a lot uh, for all they have done all they are doing and i have a think of uh, nick he wouldn't miss this meeting for all the tea in china uh, but he doesn't feel okay i hope 
Allah will give him a recovery and he'll, he'll come here and uh, for the next one. I have named, as you say, IFLK. They rehabilitated our pediatric units, you know, totally. This is the care room. They also <coughs> rehabilitated. And I don't tell you the state in which these two uh, units were. They send us many times you know, by shipping material facilities and so on. These are our home cheese. No, our wheel cheese. Wheel, wheel cheese. Uh, this is bisturi because our bisturi were both broken in the same time. They bought it for us. And they give us money, big amounts of money. Uh, that help us very, very much. So I want to thank them. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, um, Professor Badian. That was amazing. Uh, we have some time for questions, so if you want to ask questions, you're very quick. If we, um, do you want to ask a question? I'm Dr. Koka from the um, Big Bits and Analytics Unit within the um, Division of Surgery here. And um, thanks very much for your talk, Professor Badian. Merci beaucoup pour votre lecture. <laughs> now, I'm from Sierra Leone originally, so what I want to ask is, I want to ask two questions, if I may, very briefly. Um, do you think the Ebola outbreak in 2014 and 2015 um, took a lot of the focus in the healthcare in Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Liberia, um, away from other things, and placed all the focus on just the Ebola. And secondly, you said the low success of the operations in your hospital is mostly due to late presentation by the patients. So what do you think can be done to encourage patients to present earlier um, after experiencing symptoms thus um, resulting in higher um, rates of success of your operations that you perform? Alors, la première question, est-ce que euh, la maladie d'Ebola, est-ce que ça a pris tous les ressources et laissé euh, les autres services tomber un peu uh, For the first question, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because when Ebola comes, uh, uh, governments and politics do not take care of anything else. And uh, sometimes you have more death by the else than the Ebola itself. But Ebola is, uh, in a point of view of potential, so, then so, so important that you have to put all your forces in Ebola. And uh, the problem is Ebola <coughs> goes through uh, frontiers. And uh, it, if you don't act the well, you will have a, a mondial uh, crisis. So it, during the time of Ebola, just Ebola is uh, under, under the light. For the second uh, question, you know, problems are everywhere together. Our past president used to say, in, uh, in Africa, there is no emergency. Everything is, is emergent. <laughs> so you have to, to, in the same time, promote education and, uh, of young children, uh, uh, improve the communication, have uh, water uh, available everywhere, and so on. So that uh, during education for a, a change of behavior can make people uh, not think of devil or fatality, but at the first symptom, uh, bring them, their child or their patients uh, to, to the hospital. It's a big challenge. <laughs> Thank you. 
another question? Yeah. Oh, well, I think you were going to say another question. Hi, I'm, I'm Maria Williams, and she yes, is asking a question here. Um, I have two questions. First is, what is your access to diagnostic imaging like? And secondly, how do, pay, do patients have to pay for their treatment? Because I'm imagining a neurosurgical procedure is not... Yeah. We, don't, we don't have yet uh, universal health coverage. So it's an out-of-pocket payment. People pay 40% uh, uh, of all uh, depends. It's the cost of it. Okay. So it's very uh, uh, expensive. And uh, people who sometimes don't dare to go to the hospital just because they guess they will be asked money and they don't have it. It's a problem. The second is uh, the access of imaging is in Dakar, you have no problem. Uh, it's expensive, it's, it's a problem. But without that, you have a, a MRI in some hospitals and you have CT scan in all hospitals. But outside the, the capital, it's a problem. Thank you, um, thank you very much um, for such a wonderful talk. Um, I'm originally from Nigeria, and I just wanted to find out whether in Senegal you have um, much sort of government support in terms of health care, for example, I mean, I know in a lot of West African countries that's not necessarily the case. Um, although in places like Nigeria, it's not as a result of lack of resources. It's just <coughs> basically the attitude isn't there. So I just wanted to find out whether in Senegal, it's you know the government is um, you know offering as much support as possible, but the problem is genuinely a lack of resources as opposed to just a lack of will. Oh. I, I, I could have a tendency to, give, to put all our countries in the same box. They do the same, but more or less. I think our government does some efforts. Uh, our Ministry of, of Health is in the, in the protocol of uh, the government, the first, with the Prime Minister after the, the protocol of sequence order, the order of, importance. Well, of importance is uh, the Minister of Health. Okay. It's the first time yeah, is in our history. Usually they give ladies uh, Ministry of Health, they give them because it's not very important. <laughs> 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 and uh, or, or what, but when we take finances or defense also, they never give, give them to, to women. But uh, I think, I, I, I believe, in Senegal there are very, there are of effort that 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 are being done, but not enough. Thank you very much. Sergei, I want to ask you about the training opportunities for specialists because as a neurosurgeon you have to have found an opportunity to undergo the very specialist training. So maybe you can tell us where you train and where the other 13 neurosurgeons in Senegal might have been trained, and whether you see a role of Northern Partners or South-South collaborations <coughs> in the training for specialist services, because, for example, in the Gambia where I work, any specialist training has to go outside of the country, and it's a big bottleneck, I'd like to hear your opinion. Yeah, uh, very, very important question. E I have been trained since my maternal age in my country. You know, in, in the West African colonies, French speaking, uh, Dakar was the capital of Africa Occidental. So we benefit the only infrastructures the France left in Senegal. In all other countries, people came to Senegal to be trained. So, uh, many people used to go to France to be trained. Sometimes to, to Canada or, or etc. Et but when they came back, they stayed six months and they went. They left because they couldn't afford the problems. You know, uh, government decided to implement 
in in some big universities uh, the the means of, of of training people. Senegal is one of those. You can train in almost all specialties. So and, and in Dakar we have a, a neurosurgical training center <coughs> is our department where we train all these are coming from French speaking uh, sub Saharan Africa. They they are young uh, trainers or just young already trained who went back who went back to their country. Having trained in the same condition than their own country, they they used to stay because they they know they, they know the problems and they they face them. Alors, we can have uh, uh, help from northern northern countries. Yes. In our in our example, uh, we go, we always go to France. We speak French only in France, <laughs> so we go to France. And uh, I I induce my young uh, collaborators to, to to learn English so that they can go somewhere else or to France and and somewhere else to see the Anglo-Saxon system. I've never been trained in 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 any uh, English speaking. Uh, country. I went to France several times, but for short uh, stays, so that I can be in my country and 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 work. It'd just be really interested to hear from a therapy perspective what kind of access you have to therapy post-operatively, if any, and how that might affect outcomes for your patients. Sorry. <laughs> C'est l'accès pour les patients des kinesthérapeutes et les, les gens comme ça. Yeah, we we have a kinesthérapeut. Who's using a therapist in France? Uh, <laughs> not enough. In my hospital, because of uh, our speciality is uh, leads to to paralysis, we have them, but not enough. In some in some areas in in, uh, in South Senegal, there have been uh, some rebellion and assault attacks and and min, mines. mines, mines and uh, many uh, people were amputated uh, and uh, in those countries we emphasize the, the, the presence of, of a rehabilitator or or kinesiotherapist, but we need them and. Uh, we don't have them enough, unfortunately. Simon? Hi, um, I'm Simon Nadar, I'm one of the, I work in pediatric and intensive care here. Thank you for your amazing talk. I just wanted to ask you, um, how easy is it to, for you to make decision not to operate on patients who have a terrible prognosis? We have more uh, chance than you do because uh, our population are very fatalist. When you say something, they think it's already written somewhere. And so we don't have many difficulties to, to explain. We just say usually, if we uh, operate them, they will get worse. And there is no need to operate someone for him to make him get worse. And they say, oh, Allah is good. So something like that. <laughs> we, we are not yet uh, trained to court. So we are poor, we have not um, facilities, and you want us to be trained to court? No. <laughs> no, we have chance. But that raises another issue you are saying there's nothing more we can do or nothing we can offer, do you offer any kind of palliative care or do you just send the families back home with their babies? Alors, when, when we can, yes. Uh, palliative care is uh, really in the beginning in our country. Um, we, a treatment of pain or some uh, advice is we send them to the local uh, medical doctor 
and uh, make them get in touch and um, for a close follow up when they are in in dakar it's easier but uh, when we cannot <coughs> offer really anything we ask the family to be close and uh, we give them advices and so on but we usually just free pay <laughs> Um, two people here. So your first, and then Lena, your second. Um, I come from Australia, and we are starting to use a lot of the telehealth services and linking up via webcam. I know that um, in some African countries it is a drive due to the technology. Are you using any of that for consultation in different areas of Africa in internet banking and mobile banking? Yes, yes, we use it. We call it telemedicine. Yes. It's telemedicine. Yeah, we do um, teleconsultation. In some fields, we have um, the responsible of that is a professor of cardiology. We do a lot telecardiology, <coughs> but uh, in dermatology it helps. Sometimes we 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 have links with the Indian, some Indian centers for pathology, neuropathology, histology. We show them some um, some poop and they, they gi give us our their their opinion. But telemedicine is used a lot for uh, uh, public health for in uh, not specially for the big hospital, but <coughs> for the small uh, uh, structures in the rural area. But the problem is the equipment. Lina? Merci beaucoup. Merci Lina, I'm not a jack. So my question is going to be a oh. little bit different. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, my question is going to be a little bit different from actually the identification or management of these patients, because I think you hinted at several of these pathologies where your best bet inevitably will be prevention. So is there any input from yourself to the Ministry of Health from the perspective of going back to implementation, education, someone else mentioned education to try and get access and these things? Because inevitably, even if you operate, as a lot of our therapy colleagues have said, you'd want the follow-up, you'd want avoidance of infection, you'd want the therapy. So it's a whole massive setting and not just the neurosurgery. Yes, the question, uh, the answer is yes. We, we, we do uh, memorandum and, and from things like that. We, we study the question and uh, give recommendations to, to the... But you, you have to know that neurosurgery is far from the priorities of, of, of government. You know, they, they have uh, HIV, AIDS, uh, tuberculosis and malaria, and now what they call uh, uh, maladie tropical negligée, and cancer, diabetes, and so on. When you say that, there are uh, policies for implementation, etc. But these policies are for the, the maternal uh, or the infant, the fight against maternal mortality. When people, when the women get pregnant, they come to their first consultation prenatal at three months. And from, from the third month, they, they are given supplementation. It's too late for, for, for brain abnormalities. So they you have access to antenatal scanning to identify things? A few. <laughs> because... W w Often they even don't know they are pregnant. And when they come to visit after two months without regle, comment de regle? Period. <laughs> after period, they come and they are told, you are, you are pregnant. Me? <laughs> <laughs> so, alors, uh, you, it's too late for, 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 for brain abnormalities. 
So there are policies, but they are toward maternal mortality and infant. infant. We try to say, but just give, give the, the same product for all young ladies. <coughs> it's a cost. This is a problem. Now, Ian Marsh just wanted to close with a few words. Thank you yes. very much once again. Thank you.